Hey guys, you know when I first got an RV, uh, you know I always thought that putting solar power, solar panels on the RV was something that I was going to do. And uh, when I finally got around to it, I did some research and then I heard about flexible solar panels and I thought, oh yeah, that's what I'm going to do. That was so cool. You could actually walk on them. They don't really take up any, you know, usable space on your roof. My options were kind of limited at the time. This was about four years ago and really the only thing that I could find that was good were um, these panels that I got from uh, Unisolar. They're different from your typical solar panel that you would see. They came in a roll and there was a it was a thin film style uh, panel and they had a sticky side and you would basically roll them out and stick them to the roof of your RV. So I thought I'd go through some of the options available in the uh, flexible solar panels that are out there today, and uh, and especially the ones, some of the ones that I've used, and to give you some idea of some of the things that you might want to look at: thickness, power generating capability, type of solar cell they're using, type of cabling, uh, surface material, backing material, bypass diodes, grommets, price, and warranty. You know, maybe some of this information will be useful and. Help, help you when you're looking for a flexible solar panel for your RV or van or travel trailer or whatever. But uh, let's go through it. You know, there's a lot of companies out there selling these, a lot of them from China or some US, you know, some Europe or India, you know, who knows where they're from, but they all seem to start looking alike. You know, if you do a search on Amazon for 100 watts flexible solar panel, you might see companies pop up like HQST, formerly I think the Renogy uh, flexible panel, Grease Sonic, King Solar, Sundali, All Powers, Go Power has always been out there, Suaoki, Lens Sun is also another one that has popped up recently. But they all kind of start to look alike, you know, like here's three different ones here and they all kind of look similar. They are roughly the same size as you would see in a 100 watt standard rigid solar panel. And the reason for that is because they are using the same high efficiency monocrystalline solar cells that you would see in those standard panels. Now each uh, one of these cells here puts out a little over half of a, a volt of electricity and about 3.1 something watts. So when you add all these together, these are all hooked up in series, that all adds up to about between 18 and 20 volts uh, per panel and around 100 watts. So that's where your 100 watt panel comes from. Now these are uh, monocrystalline solar cells and monocrystalline cells are the highest efficient, most efficient solar cells and um, most of these panels they have, uh, they're using what's called back contact solar cells. So you don't see the uh, tabbing strips that you would see on some of the other panels that are like wires that go across the solar cell. So all of the wiring for the solar cell for the positive and the negative are all on the back of the cells, so that's a nice feature. Now for some of the vendors, you know, you really don't know what type of solar cell that uh, they're using in their panel. Some of them advertise the type of solar cell they're using. For example, uh, these Lensun solar panels here, they're using SunPower uh, solar cells, so those are from a known entity, SunPower, and those are, right now, they're the kind of the most efficient ones. However, from HQST here, they don't advertise the type of solar cell they're using, but I found that the performance is, is the same, so um, they're probably just as good. But uh, So that's another thing to look at is if, they're, if the vendor is actually advertising the type of solar cell that they're using in their panel. Now another thing to look at, of course, is the uh, panel's power generating capability and what level of solar power does it generate. And uh, for a 100 watt panel like this, they typically put out uh, about 5.6 to 5.8 amps. And they generally, for a 12 volt panel like this, they'll generally produce about 
at a level about 18 volts to 20 to 21 volts. So that's what you uh, would see in a 100 watt panel that's designed for a 12 volt system. Now um, that's typical for a 100 watt panel. Now I've seen uh, other panels kind of pop up recently. Uh, one company called Gree Sonic, I believe, uh, offers a um, 150 watt flexible solar panel. So it's similar to this except it's a little bigger and it's got probably another 16 solar cells on there. So the output of the 150 watt panel is going to be a little bit higher. And those uh, I've seen both in a 24 volt setup and in a 12 volt. So really depends on how they organize the cells and what parts they put in parallel versus series but I'm not going to go into that right now. <laughs> Now the output specifications for all of these panels is usually on the back. So when you get a solar panel, there are uh, there's a little sticker on the back that will specify, you know, what the uh, standard current output is and voltage in um, what they call standard under standard test condition. So given that uh, you know it's really hard to kind of replicate perfect uh, environment and sunny conditions all the time you know you, you're not going to always get the uh, the perfect output the highest level output from these panels sometimes you do but uh, it really depends on you know how the sun is hitting the panel at the time now I've tested all of these and they all perform at about the same level now a few other things to consider when you're selecting a panel is the type of cabling for one uh, most will have MC4 connectors on them that come out of this junction box and the MC4 connectors will allow you to connect to other panels and other solar components. Now the amount of cable is going to vary. These uh, HQSD panels came with about 10 inches of cable on either side so if you're going to wire it to something that's further away you're going to need to buy some extensions. Uh, these lens sun panels on the other hand have about five feet of cable with the MC4 connectors on them so you know if you're wearing panels close to each other you know this is probably too much but if you're you know going a distance that's probably fine um, also inside the uh, the junction box here you know you want them to make sure that there is a bypass diodes now the bypass diodes are just a really inexpensive piece but their function is to basically have the current bypass this panel if there's any excessive shading or anything that would decrease the performance of this panel and not affect the uh, rest of the solar array. So in those instances, you know, the, pa the uh, current would just pass through and not get uh, drawn down because of any shading or anything that's going on on, on one given panel. Now also, finally, there's a these uh, flexible solar panels are mountable in a number of ways, but most of them have these grommets on them. If you'll notice that the uh, for this particular HQST panel, it has a grommet here, it has one in the middle, it has one on the bottom. So it has six total, so three on either side. Whereas, uh, you know, this one from LensSun has only four. It has one here one here and there's nothing in the middle and there's one on the other corners so so that might be an issue if you uh, you know depending upon how you want to install and mount your panels is how many grommets they have now the uh, surface material used on some of the panels is uh, something to take a look at as well now most of the panels you'll see now and probably in the last couple of years are going to look like this they uh, kind of have a nice white laminate on the back and uh, kind of a clear shiny uh, laminate material on the front and you know this is the kind I have installed right now and this one is from uh, HQST and uh, it's a good panel. Uh, some of the downsides of these is that they tend to scratch a little bit and you know they don't affect the performance at all but uh, if you're kind of OCD about scratches something to consider but uh, a good panel. Some of the cool features that I've seen lately. I've had a chance to look at uh, these panels that are sent to me from LensSun to take a look at and they have a different kind of coating to them which is something that I'm kind of excited about. It's not like the shiny uh, finish if you think of it like a photograph. This is like the gloss and these are kind of a matte finish and they have a they're kind of a rubberized uh, surface. You can 
see if you look at them close, they're kind of pitted a little bit, give you a little bit of traction if you have to walk on them. And uh, they really kind of feel rugged. They don't scratch and they're easier to clean and they look like they're going to really stand up long term. Uh, I like them because they're very similar to the uh, surface that I had on my, or I have, on the uh, unisolar panels that I have. But So I think the Lensun and um, the other one, uh, Gree Sonic has panels with this surface on it. I think it's called the ETFE material that they have laminated on the front of these panels. Now the backing material is also something to uh, take into account. Uh, for example, this Lensun panel has a uh, fiberglass backing on it and uh, this other lens on panel here has an aluminum backing to it. I mean, it still has a, a layer of that ETFE material on it but it is aluminum backing and uh, that's kind of different, something you haven't really seen. Um, the reason for it I think for the aluminum is you know they say it's it's going to help dissipate some of the heat generated by the solar cells and uh, you know dissipate it through that metallic backing um, probably work really well if you mount it on a uh, like on a van or some sort of metal surface you know where you can kind of use the uh, surface of uh, of that you know car or van to help dissipate the heat kind of like a giant heat sink but that's the reason for the uh, aluminum backing. Fiberglass backing is just really similar to this. They're all about the same thickness, but different things to consider. Now the last two things to consider uh, when you're shopping for flexible solar panels, I guess like any other solar panel, is going to be price and warranty. Um, they generally run, uh, these uh, flexible panels, they generally range between um, $180 through all the way up to like $480. You know, the lower end, uh, less expensive ones like this one, for example, is about $180, I think, on Amazon. Um, the uh, Lensun ones here go for about, you know, $260 to $280 a piece. And uh, all the way up to, say, Go Power, you know, which is kind of the high end in price, uh, all the way up to like $450, $460 for a 100 watt solar panel. So take that into consideration, you know, how much money do you want to spend? Um, you know, maybe you're getting a lesser panel. I don't know. I mean, maybe not. So in regards to warranty, you know, if you're buying, if you're spending a lot of money on a flexible solar panel, you know, and something goes wrong and it doesn't perform or something goes bad with it, you know, what do you do? A lot of these, they offer a warranty for maybe a two-year, all the way up to, I think, Go Power. It offers like a 10-year warranty on their uh, solar panels. Um, so that's good if you need to ship it back and get a replacement. Something to consider is a lot of these are coming from China so or overseas somewhere. So if you have to deal with a warranty issue, uh, part of that challenge might be that you have to ship it back at your own expense. And that could be shipping it to China. Um, some of these, like the Lensun panels, they do ship from U.S. Uh, so they have supply in the U.S. and the U.K. So you're, you're, you're not getting the panel from China. So these arrived in about a week. So that was actually surprising for me. So take that into account when you're selecting a flexible solar panel. Um, you know, how much do you want to spend? How many panels do you need? And uh, what happens if you uh, need to ship it back? Having said that, kind of my philosophy for some of these is I kind of went more on the low end. And uh, when I install them, I don't install them in a real permanent way. I always install them on the roof uh, so that I, if something were to go bad, I can simply remove it and uh, swap it out with another one. So that's kind of my approach. Uh, your approach might be different. I hope I've uh, given you a few things to think about, especially if you're in the market or just want to know more about uh, flexible solar panels. And, um, you know, it's really difficult to say, uh, hey, this one's better than that one, and this is the one you should buy. They're all somewhat similar, but there are some variations that uh, I wanted, that's why I wanted to make this video and point some of those things out to you. Now, I look forward to hearing, uh, reading some of your comments if you have specific experience with some of these different solar panels and uh, others that uh, that we all might want to know about. Now I've made 
several videos about my particular solar install that I'll uh, go ahead and post. It's, I've been adding to it over the last few years. And I also uh, did a review of these uh, LensSun uh, flexible panels here recently that I'll also link to. But hey, if you're uh, new, subscribe. And otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.